Hi everyone! I have something very different for you today. So by popular request, we'll be comparing Daniel Smith's Transparent Yellow Oxide with Monte Amiata Natural Sienna. And for the sake of this video, I'll just call it Nat Sienna. I previously posted a couple comparison videos for these yellow earth colors, and many of you were interested in seeing how the two shown on screen here compare. Let's dive right in, shall we? So first up, we have transparent yellow oxide made with PY42. In hindsight, I think I really should have swatched the natural sienna before the transparent yellow oxide, but oh well. I love how this one is very easy to re-wet compared to other brands of transparent yellow oxides. It's like a lovely light coffee color. I'd urge you to try this one if you feel like your current raw sienna isn't as rich as you'd like. The granulation isn't that apparent on its own, but a unique characteristic of it is that it seems to create the finger effect instead of watercolor blooms. This would be ideal for artists who like to paint abstracts. Moving on to the natural sienna, this one also rewets rather easily, but is lighter in value than the transparent yellow oxide. On its own, it feels very much like a typical raw sienna, but more transparent. A lot of you who wanted to see the difference between these two seem to already have one or the other. What I'd like to say about them is that if I had to compare these two to another pair of colors, it would be Nickel Azo Yellow PY150 and Quin Gold or Quin Gold Hues. Where the Monte Amiata Natural Sienna is to Nickel Azo Yellow and the Transparent Yellow Oxide is to Quin Gold. And for those of you who can't relate, allow me to use a different analogy. The Monte Amiata Natural Sienna would be to golden syrup and the transparent yellow oxide would be similar to caramel sauce. So I do hope my descriptions of these colors would help a little if not a lot. Personally I had never been a fan of yellow ochres so I skipped raw sienna entirely and found the transparent yellow oxide. Once I started painting with that everything just clicked for me. It seems to be that my preference for yellow earths seems to lie towards the richer, darker end of the spectrum. If anyone has any revelation similar to mine, please do share, even if it's not specifically this type of color. I'd love to read about it. It's always cool to know how others come to love the colors that they do. Like, is it through use over time? Or is it inherent? Such a beautiful mystery. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope it was informative. Thank you for watching everyone. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated. Bye guys.